Hello everyone, and welcome to getting started with Python video. I'll go through step by step from setting up your development environment, creating and funding a testing account, and making your first transaction on Algren using the Python SDK. I recommend that you follow along by going through the getting started with Python page on our dev portal since links and details are specified on the website. First, we want to install Sandbox. There are several ways to connect to an Algorand node, but if you're a developer, we suggest using Sandbox, which is a Docker instance for setting up a node. Sandbox provides the most functionality while allowing you to start developing without creating your own node and waiting hours for it to catch up to the latest block. Before we walk through installing Sandbox, please note that you must have Docker Compose and Git installed. The links will be in the description. First, you want to open up a terminal, create a directory where you want to install Sandbox, Go to the dev portal and copy the code that clones the sandbox repository. Run this code and the sandbox should be cloned into the directory. Go into sandbox and type sandbox up testnet. So when we do sandbox up testnet, this is going to fire up testnet using sandbox. A couple things to know here is that Testnet does not come with preloaded accounts, so we need to create and fund an account to do a transaction. We are also doing a fast catchup. A fast catchup is a feature that will rapidly update a node using catch point snapshots. The entire process should sync up a node in minutes rather than hours or days. This process is the reason why we can set up our development environment and start building right away. If you want to use Indexer with Sandbox, launch Sandbox in a default mode which will launch a private network. You can find how to do so at the dev portal under the sandbox install section. You can also create your own node or use third-party services like PureStake or Algo Explorer. The links to these services are provided in the description as well. Okay, the fast catchup is now completed and now we have a testnet up and running with sandbox. Algram provides multiple SDKs that allow interacting with the Algram blockchain. The official SDKs provided by Algram are JavaScript, Python, Java, and Go. Okay, let's install the Python SDK. All you have to do is copy over the code from the dev portal and run the code. Run this code, and you can see that the Python SDK is installed in a matter of seconds. Now the Python SDK is installed and ready to interact with the sandbox node. If you want to learn more about the Python SDK, please visit the GitHub repository. The link is in the description. Now that the development environment is set up, let's create an account. As I said before, Testnet doesn't provide testing accounts, so we must create an account to do a transaction. To create an account, copy over the code snippet under create an account on Algorand to an IDE of your choice. Here, we're importing account and renomic from the Algo SDK. And when we do account.generate account, this is going to spit out the private key and the address of the account. And then we're going to print out the address, private key, and the passphrase of the account. Let's try running this code. Here you can see that the command prompt printed out the address, the private key, and the passphrase. For future references, let's copy this and paste it into the code base as a comment. The account we just created can be used on the mainnet, testnet, and betanet. The account balance will differ based on what network you're on, but it is the same account for all of the networks. Important thing to know here is that you never want to share your private key and your monomic, which is the passphrase over here. Anybody who has access to these values can gain access to your account and everything inside it. So make sure to secure your private key and your monomic at a safe place. Since this is a tutorial and this is an education purpose, I am sharing the private key and the passphrase, but make sure to secure your values. All right, let's move on to the next step, which is to fund the account. The account we just created doesn't have any algos in it, and to send the transaction, the account must be funded to cover the minimum account balance and the transaction fee. To fund the account, we have to use what's called a faucet. A faucet is an application that sends test algos to your test accounts for development purposes. Now go to the Algorand testnet faucet. The link is provided in the description, or you can find the link directly on the dev portal under fund the account. Before you go to the faucet, make sure to copy your address. Now go to the Algorand testnet dispenser, do the CAPTCHA, paste in your address, and click dispense. 
when the transaction ID appears at the bottom, this means that the transaction went through. And you can actually check that the transaction occurred successfully by clicking on the transaction ID and going to the Algo Explorer. Here you can see the status of the transaction, who the sender was, and who the receiver is, and how much the sender sent. Now that we have created and funded our account, let's send our first transaction. Before we dive into the code that sends the transaction, we must connect to a sandbox node that we started before. To do that, copy and paste the code from the website under Connect Your Client. Here what we are doing is we are importing AlgoD from the Algo SDK, and at the code that we copied over, we are defining AlgoD address, AlgoD token, and we're using these two values over here to instantiate the client. These two values are specific to a sandbox node, and you can get these values from the sandbox readme file. Like I said, the AlgoD address and AlgoD token we're using here are specific to the sandbox node. Therefore, if you want to connect to a different client like PureStake, Algo Explorer, or your custom node, you have to change these parameters. Please refer to the documentations for more details. Okay, moving on. Let's make sure that the account is correctly funded by checking the account. Copy and paste the code under check your balance. And here, we're getting the account info from my address. And this is the value that will be given for the argument. And here, we're going to print out the account balance. Finally, let's dive into sending your first transaction. Every transaction on Algorand follows this procedure. Build, sign, submit, and wait for confirmation. Building a transaction means filling in the details of the transaction. Again, let's copy the code over. The code is under build first transaction. Here to build a transaction, we're getting the suggested parameters with this method. And then we're also specifying the flat fee and the fee that we want to pay for the transaction. Then we're specifying the receiver here, and we're also including a note field. Here in the note field, you can include a message or any types of data structure that you want to include. Using these parameters, we're going to build an unsigned transaction with the payment transaction method. Here we're putting in your address, the parameters, the receiver, the amount of algos that you want to send, and a note field. Now that we have created an unsigned transaction, Let's sign it with the account we created before. For transactions to be considered valid, it must be signed with the sender's private key. And we can do so with the code under sign first transaction. Here with the sign method, we're going to use our private key of the account that we have created above, which is this value over here. Please note that there are multiple ways of signing transactions and you can find more details on it on the dev portal. Now that we have built and signed your transaction, let's submit it to the Algorand network and wait for it to get confirmed. Again, we're going to copy over the code under submit the transaction. Here, with the send transaction method, we are sending the signed transaction that we have created above to the Algorand network. This will provide a transaction ID and we will print it out with this line of code. Then, we're going to wait for confirmation. On the Algorand network, it usually takes 4 to 5 seconds for the transactions to get approved or to fail. So here we are going to get this confirmed transaction if it gets approved, or we are going to print out the error if it fails. And then down here, we are going to print out the transaction information and the decoded note. We also pasted in the utility function called wait for confirmation, and this is a function that is used to get the values of the transaction process. One thing to note here is that when we do a send transaction, what's actually happening is that this is where the consensus algorithm will determine if the account has enough funds to send the transaction as well if not double spending. Now we have our complete code for sending your first transaction. Now before we run this code, let's make sure to comment this line out as we do not want to create another account. We will be using the account that we have created before. Okay, now let's go down to the bottom of the code base and call the first transaction example function. And for the first argument, we're going to provide the private key of the account that you have created. Copy over the private key that we've created before. And then the address of the account as the second argument. Great, now let's try running this example. After you run the code, this is the result that you should be seeing. 
you will first see the account balance. Then you'll see the transaction ID over here. And then you will see a transaction information object that shows all of the parameters that was included in the transaction. And also a decoded note at the bottom that says hello world. Since we actually sent the transaction to the test network, we can see details on this transaction on Algo Explorer or Goal Seeker, which are third-party applications that queries and shows all transactions and activities that happened on the Algorand network. All you have to do is copy the transaction ID and go to Algo Explorer. The link is in the description or you can find it on the dev portal. Once you're at Algo Explorer, first thing you want to change is to change this mainnet to testnet. Since we are doing our example on the testnet, you have to make sure to change this value to testnet. You can see that Algo Explorer supports mainnet, testnet, and betanet. Paste in the transaction ID that you copied over. And here, now you can see all of the transaction details of who sent it, who received it, and how much algos that you sent, the status, type, and the block. So that was a quick guide on how to get started on Algorand using the Python SDK. I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope you continue to learn and build on the algorithm blockchain. Thank you so much.